We are Haskane Accounting Theory students. We are applying the ideas of Nicholas Maxwell to the practice and theory of accounting. The concepts we want to discuss are the differences between wisdom and knowledge, how common known theories and practices like positive accounting theory, capital markets research, and international financial reporting standards should be questioned, not just accepted. What? Where? Why? Why do we do that? We brush our teeth, we comb our hair, we follow track procedures. Whether in our daily simple activities or complex personal work environments, we never truly question why do we do things the way we do. Nicholas Maxwell, he's the one always asking why. We should talk to him. Well, we cannot just be faith people. We have to ask questions for ourselves. And I'm glad you were somebody who does that. Nicholas Maxwell argues that we should develop wisdom and not just knowledge. We do this during inquiry, but I'm not too sure what the difference between knowledge and wisdom is. Can you please explain? The difference between knowledge and wisdom is... I don't understand why this cake didn't work. Oh, I followed the recipe. Maybe Grandma will know. From this simple example, you can see that the actions of Susie represent knowledge, while the actions of the grandmother represent wisdom. For a person to acquire wisdom, they must search for their answers to their problems instead of just taking their results at face value. Hmm, I'm starting to understand now. So, where else can this be applied? The problem of differentiating between wisdom and knowledge can be found in all life situations, and especially in future careers. Let's ask Susie what she wants to be when she grows up. I want to be an accountant. Let's go look into that. Come on, Grandma. Hi, I'm Nicholas Maxwell, and this is Susie. I'm trying to show Susie the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Um, she wants to grow up to be an accountant, mm -hmm. and that's why we need your help. I'll see what I can do to help. I feel that accountants follow the rules and procedures put in front of them without questioning them and consequently fail to develop wisdom. Do you find that you yourself as an accountant and other accountants in your profession fail to question your procedures? Well, I can't speak for all accountants, but to be honest, I do often find myself accepting accounting theories without questioning them. Can you give us examples of theories that you just accept and possibly should be questioning? Well, of course, the two that come to mind right away are positive accounting theory and capital markets research. Positive accounting theory, or PAT, is the belief that all accountants are self-interested actors. Let's check out this example. What are you doing? 
What are you talking about? I saw you wait out those numbers right there. Well, I have to change these numbers. These negative numbers are going to affect my bonus this year. I have family and kids I need to take care of. We all have a family to take care of, but we also have a fiduciary duty to represent the company faithfully. And by changing those numbers, we're not doing that. You have to put in the appropriate numbers. See how that person would not allow him to change the numbers? That proves that not all accountants are self-interested actors. We cannot just accept the assumptions put forth by Pat. Capital Markets Research, or CMR, is another theory. We rely on the assumptions that the market acts efficiently and that accounting information is fully reflected in the stock prices. Oh, look at our record earning stock prices this quarter. They're just going to keep going and going and going. Yeah, with our mark to market accounting, they're just going to keep going up and the public is never going to figure out what's going on. And our company's not actually making money. Yeah, look at these numbers. I'm worth millions. <laughs> solely believe in CMR, the public may be misled. As shown, stock prices may not accurately reflect the financial state of a company. The average investor should be skeptical of the price and not fully rely on it when making investment decisions. Well, I understand why we should question theories, but I don't really see the application for accountants. I mean, what are all these books for? Well, that book you have there is the International Financial Reporting Standards. We are moving towards IFRS, and it will be replacing Canadian GAAP by the year 2011. IFRS is more of a principles-based accounting versus rules-based, and it will lead towards more uniformity across the world. That book there is a good example of the accounting profession moving towards more of a wisdom-based profession versus a knowledge-based. Because IFRS is principles-based, it relies more on the professional judgment of the accountants. For the most part, IFRS is beneficial to the entire world. So what do you mean, the most part? Well, for some countries, IFRS is beneficial. However, it may exclude the needs of certain countries and focus on the dominance of the powerhouse of the developed nations. Oh, so you mean IFRS is another theory like PAD and CMR that we should question? Exactly, I think you understand now. So what we learned for today from Maxwell is that we should continuously question theories put forth for us to follow. In questioning these theories, we help develop wisdom. Maxwell feels that knowledge is simply not enough. We need wisdom. By continuously questioning, we help develop an understanding of these theories. So now we can all see that knowledge without wisdom is such a dangerous thing. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good cake, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs>